Micro strategy, how much does the Bitcoin on its balance sheet actually benefit it in terms of its share price compared to its competitors? Let's take a look at some graphs, some diagrams and compare it to a direct competitor as well as to some Bitcoin miners and just see how micro strategy has been benefiting from that Bitcoin on its balance sheet. So let's get right into it. So as you can see here, this is simply Wall Street for MicroStrategy. You can see here that the fair value from their perspective is actually $376.99 versus the current value of over $1,200. So that's a pretty big gap. But you'll also uh, have in mind here that the actual value of MicroStrategy is not derived simply from their underlying business, but also from what they have on their balance sheet, which is billions and billions of dollars of deep Bitcoin that they've been accumulating for years, and it's been a huge benefit to them. Uh, today, we're going to compare them to a, a direct competitor of theirs, which is PTC. Uh, you can see here, this is Seeking Alpha, and this is a list of their competitors. You have MicroStrategy, uh, App, App11 Corporation, PTC Inc., Fair Isaac Corporation, uh, Zoom Video, you know, I don't know why Zoom's on there. I don't think they're, they're a competitor. Anyways, doesn't matter. PTC, very similar market cap, very, you know, same industry, similar market cap, way more employees, um, but different prices, different um, PE ratios, different all sorts of things. In fact, PTC actually has a significantly higher PE ratio than MicroStrategy, where they have 90, almost a 91 PE ratio, and MicroStrategy is actually only at 48 on their PE ratio. Uh, compared to the two. Uh, but we'll take a look as to why that is. Uh, now you'll also notice that PTC is a significantly lower value than MicroStrategy is in terms of share price. And that is because their outstanding shares for PTC is over 119 million shares. Whereas for MicroStrategy, that's down at about 14 million shares. Since they haven't, by di haven't been diluting by issuing stock, they've actually been issuing cheap debt through capital markets in order to buy more Bitcoin and, and expand uh, on their business. So they've been doing their, their accumulation of debt and in a different way. Uh, they haven't been diluting, they've been accumulating, you know, selling bonds uh, and taking very low cost debt for themselves, which has honestly turned out to be a little bit brilliant on Michael, Michael Saylor's part, but we're not talking about the infinite money glitch today. We're talking about um, how their Bitcoin has actually benefited them greatly compared to their peers. Anyways, so what we're going to look at is called a sand key diagram, sand key diagram, so it's going, oh yeah, and you can see here the PE ratio, uh, MicroStrategy actually has the lowest in comparison to its peers uh, as far as some of these websites are concerned. So we're going to look at a Sankey diagram here and we're going to look, be looking at uh, their income statement basically. Uh, they have a, yeah, just for their income statement. This is for 2023. And you'll see that on this, this on the left here, you can see all the different revenue streams that they had, okay? Uh, this is total revenue and that big pipe there feeds into like all the profit and earnings and all that. So it's all those sorts of things. So you can see that they had a total revenue of $504 million in 2023, ending with a $90 million um, earnings after all expenses were paid. So that's what they had there. Now compare that to PTC. PTC had $2.1 in sales or revenue, excuse me, $2.1 billion in revenue from all their different revenue streams, one, two, three, four, five, this is just five different revenue streams, $2 billion versus 500 million. So we're talking about over four times the size of MicroStrategy, but they only have the same market cap, not four times their market cap, okay? The same market cap. Their earnings were 245 million versus MicroStrategy's 90 million, so more than two X micro strategies earnings after expenses uh, with a significantly significantly higher revenue stream now what is the difference between these two companies in terms of purely looking at this income flow statement the only difference i'm aware of is that micro strategy owns a significant amount of bitcoin and ptc does not so that in itself, in it, all things held, e all, all other things held equal is allowing MicroStrategy to, you know, punch four times above its weight in terms of its revenue compared to its, um, its current share price. And in terms of its actual earnings reports, we're talking a little over two, two and a half X, you know, 
their actual earnings value. So the value of the Bitcoin, and I, I know I just did a video about HODL or non-HODL, and, and this is where I'll let some of my biases shine. This is where I see the value of a Bitcoin HODL. It's allowing this company, all things held equal to its peers, to punch significantly above its weight simply because it holds Bitcoin. Now, that is because also it has no exposure really to the risk of mining the Bitcoin like the miners do and simply just holding it and having a, you know, an, an extra side business behind that as well. But some of the Bitcoin miners are branching out and having that as well. So if, if you can have multiple revenue streams and a hodl, I think that that can allow your balance sheet to expand and allow the multiples of your share price to expand as well. That's my perspective. Feel free to, to, to dispute that in the comments. I'd be happy to see uh, other perspectives on this. Of course, I'm totally open to being wrong, but that's what I see when I look at this and compare them to a direct competitor uh, that doesn't have Bitcoin on their balance sheet. Also with PTC, if we go up here and we look at their valuation, according to simply Wall Street, even at that 90 PE, they're actually undervalued at $178. They're, they're saying that their fair value is actually closer to $401, which if we remember over here on MicroStrategy, they're saying that their fair value was also close to that range. So they're saying that they're similarly valued companies, even though MicroStrategy actually makes significantly less money than PTC does um, consistently. And like I said before, the only real difference is that Bitcoin hodl between these two companies in terms of them acting, you know, all things else held equal. Um, PTC makes just way more money than they do. They have a broader business than MicroStrategy does, but MicroStrategy has the infinite money glitch. MicroStrategy has that Bitcoin and they keep buying more. Now let's compare that to some Bitcoin miners. Now this is BitDigital. Now, this is where the difference comes in as to why they really don't get as much of a benefit from their whole and stuff. So Bit Digital has become a significantly, uh, you know, decently um, diversified Bitcoin miner. They've got Ethereum that's being, um, that's feeding into their earnings. They've got AI that is now feeding into their earnings. They've got and the Bitcoin network that is feeding into their earnings. Now this is for 2023. So this does not include any of the AI stuff yet. That'll actually probably make this different because the, the, the amount of money that they intend to make and have contracted to make from their AI business is actually more than they lost last year. So that'll be cool. It might actually make them a profitable business uh, outside of the Bitcoin. So anyways, this is what we're looking at. So they had a revenue of $36 million, gross profit of $10 million after all the, you know, the cost of everything to produce that Bitcoin. Now, they ended up actually having $91 million of expenses and they had an earnings of you know, negative $80 million for the year after all of that. Now, I <laughs> now with that translates to a, um, you know, they're saying that they're fair, no, they don't even have fair value listed on here, but that translates that, to them having a, you know, a price to sales of three. Uh, their PE is actually negative 14 because they're losing money. Um, and a share price uh, very, very low, uh, you know, under $2 right now. I think that'll grow as Bitcoin price grows and things become better in that respect. But for now, well, we're not doing there. For now, we'll see that they have Despite you know the similar exposure to Bitcoin, despite having a diverse a diversified revenue stream, uh, they're still losing money, and as a result, they have a low price point, a low valuation at the moment for that. Uh, CleanSpark has a, a significantly larger, significantly larger Bitcoin hodl compared to BitDigital. They're like six thousand or something. Anyways, they only have one revenue stream though. That's Bitcoin. I, I would like to see them maybe diversify this, but for now, that's not what we're talking about. Uh, they made $168 million in revenue last year, gross profit of $74 million. Uh, then, you know, their expenses came out to 206. They had earnings of negative $132 or $132 million, excuse me, $132 million uh, negative earnings in 2023 for Clean Spark. Uh, and that is, again, why we're seeing some of that drag, right? Uh, because there is inherent risk in this industry. They have exposure to that risk as high, highly capital intensive market that they are involved in versus MicroStrategy, which aside from holding Bitcoin deals in software, which has huge profit margins and relatively low expenses once they've produced a piece of software that works. 
um, so they can just like ride that to the bank. Whereas CleanSpark and BitDigital, they need to keep up infrastructure. They need to, to pay for constantly updating that infrastructure, keeping it running, maintaining it, uh, and hoping that the price of the asset that it is creating doesn't you know crater. Uh, and that is risk. And we're seeing that in the um, having coming up here and how people are attributing risk to that. And we're seeing prices come lower. But once that Bitcoin starts taking off, uh, and we start seeing these red numbers turn to nice green numbers like here on PTC and on MicroStrategy. Once we start seeing that, that's when that I think that these two will see a you know two plus x, maybe even four x um, expansion to the multiples on their shares uh, due to their Bitcoin hold and due to that. I think that the MicroStrategy is that roadmap, that that proof of concept, that that having a treasury of Bitcoin is a benefit to your to your share price directly uh, once you remove the risk of the you know the capital aspect of it and the production asset aspect of it. Um, because let's face it, MicroStrategy isn't worth twelve hundred dollars a share because of their ninety million dollars of earnings. Uh, <laughs> PTC is you know barely would barely be worth about that with their you know, revenue of two billion, their earnings of two hundred and forty-five million a year, they'd barely be, you know, reach that same capitalization in market in their market. So I, I do think that that shows that micro strategy that their infinite money glitch that they've unlocked has allowed them to punch significantly above their weight, has absolutely shot their stock price into the stratosphere. And I do, in my mind, I think that that is kind of a proof of concept. Now, like I said, um, Feel free to, to debate me in the comments. Feel free to educate me on, on how that might not be the case or something else that's going on with MicroStrategy. Maybe I missed something. Maybe this isn't the whole picture. And that's fine. I'm open to being wrong. Like always, I'm open to being wrong. Um, I just wanted to look at this chart, break it down, show it compared to a peer uh, of MicroStrategy as well as compared to some Bitcoin miners and just kind of open that conversation up. There. So that's all I've got for you today. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a profitable day.